Hello there. After all that Article 16 hard talk, it's all gone soft with mutterings of a new deal. But will it be a UK sellout? As per usual, please like, subscribe and comment below. And when subscribing, please do press that little bell, but also select the All option, or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. Boris Johnson and Lord Frost made it clear. ECJ jurisdiction over Northern Ireland must stop and it's a UK red line. And if that did not happen, Article 16 would be used to effectively make it so. And as a result, the EU stated ECJ jurisdiction was their red line and ended up threatening all sorts of hell and high water. Into the mix came the French with their fishing vessel licence demands, barking orders at us stating that the UK must hand over all the licences that France demanded. There would be fishing battles, trade wars, massive tailbacks at the ports, electricity would be cut off, Christmas would be cancelled. Now suddenly, everything is getting cosy. There's talk that we can work towards a solution, and both sides are saying that these nice, soft words from the other side mean we can work out our differences. But how can both sides stick to this ECJ jurisdiction red line and both sides win? Does it mean that the EU has surrendered to that one, or has the UK caved in? Also, the fishing licence thing has all gone quiet as well. Does that mean we stuck to our guns, or have all French boats now been given the go-ahead to fish in our waters? Now, the Irish Times is reporting that the UK has been the one to pull back from the brink, so creating an opportunity on the protocol. And the Telegraph is saying that the EU is the one that has simmered down. So the press are catering to their respective domestic audiences so that both sides can claim they are the winner in this phase of the Brexit battle. So there is obviously a deal being thrashed out in the background. But as with all of these things, there will always be winners and losers. And therefore, one side will definitely lose out on their ECJ jurisdiction red line. But which side will that be? Brussels? or London. Now one thing that's come out is that some MPs are pushing for there to be a vote in both the House of Commons and the House of Lords on whether or not Article 16 is triggered. Yes, Labour and Lib Dem front benches are claiming that they must be asked for permission before Boris can use that withdrawal agreement clause. And doesn't that bring back the dark memories of Ramona MPs plotting a way to try and use parliamentary procedure to stymie Brexit? All with the collusion of former Speaker John Burko manufacturing the means for the anti-Brexiteers to do all they could to break Brexit. You can imagine them voting for anything pro-EU, even now. And as for those red bench polishers in the House of Lords, they'd love to have another crack at breaking Brexit somehow. Or setting our success back a bit, all to show that Brexit has failed and must be reversed. However, the government is claiming that a parliamentary vote to trigger Article 16 is not required. Now, the last time that claim was made was over the triggering of Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, and that one ended up in the courts courtesy of Gina Miller, where judges ruled that a parliamentary vote was indeed required. So I'm wondering if some litigious Rimona isn't going to crawl out of the woodwork to chance their arm on this one too although their grounds might not be as firm because Article 50 was a street to permanent constitutional change, but Article 16 isn't. But some people will do anything to muddy the Brexit waters and make it harder for Brexit UK, even if by doing so they further unsettle the politics of Northern Ireland. They would just vote on short-term, political, anti-Tory anti-Brexit and anti-Boris grounds. 
aren't those opposition MPs listening to people like Lord Trimble, who knows a thing or two about Northern Ireland, because he's been one of the architects of the Belfast Agreement? And all the unionist and loyalist politicians who despair at the damage being done to their community by the Border Protocol. They want the Protocol gone sharpish. And someone like Kate Huey, a former Labour MP, now Baroness, who was born in County Antrim. Why don't they listen to these people and back the UK stance on Northern Ireland? Obviously because many of their hearts are still buried deep within Brussels. And isn't it funny that the courts always seem to come out on the anti-Brexit side? You'd think the judges were biased or something. But to get back to topic, I get this uncomfortable feeling that the UK will end up with some shiny new baubles while the EU runs off with the jurisdiction. And if that happens, the roundabout will continue with the EU stepping in every now and again to find another reason to screw down on the protocol, leaving the UK to continually have to fight to keep itself together with Macron's France continually needling us at every opportunity until at least next May when the French presidential elections take place. So I worry that the UK side might be tempted to row back on that ECJ jurisdiction red line. But what will we get in return? The ability to trade a few more things between Great Britain and Northern Ireland? Something to show that the border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK isn't quite as onerous as it was before. That will not be good enough, because it will continue to leave Northern Ireland in a constitutional and political limbo as a de facto colony of the European Union. Let's see what the small print brings with it. Now, what has that old lefty communist Jeremy Corbyn been up to now? But before I get on to that, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my super thanks, Patreon and PayPal supporters, as well as those that do buy a mug with my mug on it. Links in the descriptions box below. You really do help me keep this channel going. The former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has decided to take legal action against Tory councillor Paul Nickerson because Nickerson tweeted a photoshopped image of Corbyn setting out to lay a wreath by the burning Liverpool taxi that a Christian convert decided to hire on his way to meeting 70 undefiled ladies. So Corbyn is offended, eh? Now the tweet has been deleted, Mr Nickerson has apologised in writing to Mr Corbyn and been suspended from his party, and now his Twitter page no longer exists. So, end of event, surely. No, because a spokesperson for Corbyn has confirmed he's taking legal action, presumably because he's offended. I wonder how many of those Labour Party members who were involved in anti-Semitic behaviour he'll be suing for bringing him into disrepute as party leader. Was he not offended by them? So what's your opinion on a possible protocol sellout? Please like and comment below.